Welcome to the introductory video for 11 Habits for More Interesting Photos. Now I'm calling these habits uh, for lots of reasons instead of tips or tricks or techniques or find the magic button on your camera because uh, there is no such thing and habits are something you do over and over again and they just become part of your process so you don't even have to think about it. Uh, you do lots of uh, habits already, I'm sure, in your life. A couple of them I can think of are, are brushing your teeth or uh, tying your shoes or when you drive home and you just take the same route. You don't even think about how you do it. You just do it. So that's the goal here. These uh, habits that I'm going to discuss will become part of your uh, photography process so that your photos are more interesting. The reason I'm using the word interesting photos instead of better photos is because better photos imply that there's a technique or a secret button or um, if I just have the right equipment I will do better in my photos. More interesting photos has more of an uh, intent of learning the art, learning all the, the technical and creative sides of photography so that your photos are more engaging, they have extra layers of meaning, and they're not just the thing you swipe by on Instagram or uh, social media. So that's the desire with interesting photos. These habits are something you can start doing right now. Uh, you can use them with every camera ever made from phones to film cameras, digital cameras, $20 cameras to $20,000 cameras. So they are uh, accessible to everyone. They've been around for a long time. Uh, there's no secrets here. I'm just bringing them all together hopefully in a way that is interesting for you to learn about. So stay tuned for the next, uh, the first habit coming up in just a minute. Let's take a look at the elements that go into making interesting photos, the ingredients. I'll use a lot of food metaphors uh, as I teach photography and ingredients I think are a good a metaphor for the elements that go into making up interesting photos. Uh, in our case, we have three. We have light, composition, and the subject. Those three elements, ingredients, are important to making an interesting photo. And the more interesting each element is, the more interesting the photo is. So let's start with an interesting photo. What I do when I look for photos is I assess what the light's doing, what my subject possibilities are, and places I could uh, create an interesting composition where I hold the camera and position the object subject in the camera. So sometimes when you're taking photos, you get a case where the subject is very interesting and the light is equally interesting. So your composition then sometimes results in equal interest. That's kind of rare. I don't come across too many photos of mine, at least, where all those are equally interesting. There's often the case where one of those three is more interesting. So let's take a look at those. Sometimes you'll get a case where you have a subject that is amazingly interesting. And what the, the nice thing about that is then you don't have to worry as much about the light you don't have to work as hard, and you don't have to work as hard with your composition. They take up less of the total interest in the photo because the subject has so much interesting weight by itself. Let's look at another case. One of the first things I'll look at with a photo is the light. And especially at sunrise or sunset or amazing fog, or if you're in an airplane above the clouds, the light is just amazing. And all you have to do is almost get out and point the camera at something. So your, your composition is pretty easy. And even no matter what your subject is, almost, almost, but you don't have to work as hard to find an interesting subject when you've got amazing light. Let's look at the last case. I find myself uh, doing this a lot, uh, taking photos where the composition is the major part of the work and the light isn't as important in the overall interest of the photo and neither is the subject. The subject's still important, but the composition 
takes the main part. Um, the reason for this for me is uh, because this allows me to take photos almost any time of day in almost any kind of light, almost any kind of thing. So it uh, lets me take photos where I don't have to wait for sunset or sunrise. I don't have to go hiking in the cold or the, the heights <laughs> in the hills. Uh, and I don't have to uh, really wait for a photo, but I can go make a photo almost any time I want. So a lot of my photos have emphasis and interest in the comp composition, very maybe little in the light and next in the subject. Next up will be Habit number one for creating more interesting photos. So it's time for habit number one of creating more interesting photos. And habit number one to creating more interesting photos is seeing better photos, looking, uh, noticing, looking at the world as a photographer versus someone who just rushes by to the next thing. And what that means is, is you see things differently. Uh, you notice things in the, in the back of your brain, uh, your subconscious that notices Hey, that's interesting and different. I haven't seen that before. Uh, it means looking up. It means looking down. It means sometimes turning around and, and seeing what's behind you. Uh, there's interesting photos everywhere. Um, you don't have to wait for sunset or sunrise or go to amazing mountains or vistas or landscapes or uh, buildings or art museums. There's interesting photos everywhere. The habit is to start learning how to do that and see that differently. So um, I'm going to give you some examples in a minute. I'm going to we'll take we'll go walk outside the classroom here and and see what we can find. Uh, we'll even look inside the classroom a little bit and see where there's some interesting photos in the midst of all this ordinary stuff of a typical classroom. So uh, that's what we're going to do. Uh, this is a lifetime of learning habit, seeing more interesting photos. Um, it's not something you're going to master right away. Uh, I'm still learning it. I'm still getting better at it. Uh, but the main thing is to pay attention to that little voice as you're walking that might say, look over here. There might be something. So that's your job is to see better photos. All right. So here we are in our classroom. Uh, this is the view I get to see all the time. As you can see, it's uh, full of IMAX and 27-inch IMAX, and uh, it's kind of dark. So where are interesting photos in here? Here's how I approach it. First, I'm looking at the light, and one, there's not enough of it, but the light is doing something interesting on these IMAX. If you can look a little bit, you'll see that they kind of have this glow, this little bit of shine to them that's coming from these overhead lights. And they're kind of interesting subjects, in part, because there's so many of them. So composition, then, what I'm going to do to see this interesting photo is, is use this reflection of light, the shine on these IMAX, the repetition, and the darkness in the back. I'm going to combine all those together to create an interesting photo out of a relatively uninteresting space. So I'm gonna put the camera on a tripod and uh, show you how this works. As I mentioned, the light in here is not very interesting. Uh, it's pretty dark, but sometimes uh, lack of light can let us do some interesting things. Um, so that's what I'm gonna try and leverage here. Uh, I'm looking at patterns, I'm looking at the shine. I'm actually gonna make my photo intentionally a little darker than it needs to be. And uh, that might recreate an interesting photo. So what I'm doing here is I'm lining up on the IMAX and I'm looking at the background in this one composition here. I've got some posters in the background, so I don't want that. 
I do want to go straight on. It creates a more interesting look. Let's see if I can not pull my microphone over. So let's go here to this group. And I'm going to set my camera to be a little dark. All right, so what I'm doing as I look in my composition here, I'm seeing three computers in the middle, a couple on the edges to kind of create a frame. And I'm just zooming with my lens, holding still. And then I go click. Try a different arrangement, get a little lower. I'm focusing on the computer, the second row of computers. And uh, we'll see how that looks in this ordinary classroom with ordinary light and ordinary IMAX. Let's see if we can make an interesting photo. And this photo should uh, rely more heavily on the composition than the light and the subject. All right, so let's, let's take a walk outside and see what's happening out here. See if we can find any interesting photos outside the classroom. Uh, we are underneath the flight path for SeaTac Airport, so it might get loud. Uh, it's, sounds like another plane's coming. So here's what we got. We got some stairs and a brick wall, little hill with some trees and a parking lot. So sometimes there's some neat little stuff down here if you can do detail photos. But let's go up to the hill and take a look up there. So here's what I'm seeing. The sky's not very interesting. It's just blue-ish and gray skies. Subjects. Got some trees, some cars, big metal box, and this funky tree. It's called a monkey puzzle tree. Let's try that. We'll try taking some pictures of that. All right, so we're going to try and take some pictures of this tree. This monkey puzzle tree. Um, one of the things, first things I do is I try and get as close as I can. It creates interesting compositions. Um, that's a whole habit by itself, but we're going to walk around a little bit and see what we've got. Looking at backgrounds, looking up, seeing all the different options for taking pictures here. So a simple one is to, again to use repetition, these spines that are on the side of the tree and uh, to zoom in, I'll get as close as I can without hurting myself and uh, seeing what it looks like. And take a couple pictures, try some different variations, try vertical. Use your legs, get lower. You'll notice the one thing I'm not doing is just taking a picture from my normal height from a snapshot place. So once you see the interesting picture, you need to create a composition that makes an interesting picture. There's so much in the background that I, I have to ignore. Uh, that's why I got so close. These branches make interesting th patterns. We'll try one of those looking up. Still paying attention to the background. Trying different things. Walk around the tree a little bit. Trying different things to make interesting photos out of this interesting subject when the light isn't very interesting. Actually, it's really nice light for photos though. The shadows are very soft, so that's a good thing. One of the things I mentioned is uh, to look down and uh, there's a little yellow flower here that I'm also gonna take a picture of. So I've got this simple little flower, this little yellow flower. I'm just gonna get close because there's all sorts of distractions around it and just do 
as close as I can. Get a nice, simple photo with this one little flower. In this ordinary place, in ordinary light, but that, that little yellow flower stands out. So that's a great example of seeing better photos. In the midst of all this brown grass and pine cones and concrete, there's some little yellow flowers waiting to have their picture taken. <laughs>